Hey everybody, my name is Eddie Phoenix and welcome to a brand new series on my channel called Song Theory. This show will be all about pop, rap, indie, rock, any any genre you can think of. I'm going to take a song and I'm going to turn it into some type of psychology project. I like doing that and I think the other people out there like you guys like to see what people are thinking behind the scenes when they're writing a song. And that's the whole fun of this. It's a complete theory. We don't know if it's true or not. But it's fun to speculate, right? <laughs> no? It's just me? Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. The topic for today is Sia. Sia is a great artist. She's been around for a while. And she just made this new song called Elastic Heart. Now, Elastic Heart is surrounded by a bunch of controversy right now. Because a lot of people think the song is, is disgusting. And the video with Shia LaBeouf. That was enough for them personally, but I think that the video and the song and the lyrics, they all come together to make this cohesive story that I think you guys uh, should be able to understand, and I'm here to do that, okay? Now, quite frankly, some of these songs and some of the, the things in the songs are pretty obvious. Like, for example, uh, the subject of the song is a girl. No, duh. That's not really a theory. Uh, some of the stuff I can tell you straight off the bat what it really is, and there is no confusion. Now, sometimes you're going to hear this voice. Well, I don't know. I feel like that song is blah, 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 and this and that. Yeah, that guy is the Facebook statuses, the YouTube comments, uh, the Twitter feeds, all that stuff. That voice right there is the voice of the people, the dumb people who don't understand common things. So that guy is going to be asking me questions that most people out there are thinking. I'm going to combat those questions with logic, sometimes with theory. So I hope you guys can enjoy it, and I hope you can stay on board, because this is going to be a wild ride. Now, first off, I just want to say, okay, a lot of people in this world, and I say a lot because I don't want to say everybody, that's an extreme, and I don't want to use that, but a lot of people seem to believe that music is just this loud sound coming out of a stereo or, or earphones that you hear, and no, that's not it at all. Music is, is, is this language that you have to be able to speak sometimes we hear things in lyrics that don't make a lot of sense to us but when we actually look at the video and we look at the lyrics and we kind of get an idea of the actual artist as a whole we begin to understand a lot more about the whole uh, concept behind the song itself so that's exactly what we're here to do. We're here to understand the concept of the song and the lyrics and all that stuff. So right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain Sia's song, uh, Elastic Heart, and the lyrics. Okay, now before we get too far in this video, I want to go ahead and give two disclaimers. Number one, I will not be playing any of this song during the video because of copyright rules on YouTube. Number two, you really want to take a look at this video uh, of the real song before you listen to this, uh, what I'm about to say, because it'll give you a clearer understanding of what's about to happen, okay? Uh, now, let's go ahead and get started. So this song really has three main points. The subject, or who's talking or singing in the song, who the subject is talking to, or the message in the song. Now, all of these are very important because you want to understand that you have to have a good, clear uh, uh, direction for where the song is going so in this case in the first few lines of the song uh, she's actually talking about a relationship that happened to fail uh, and another one bites the dust that's actually the first line of the song and another one bites the dust suggests that she had another relationship that failed and now it's destroyed and I want it and I wanted it bad but there were so many red flags so she obviously saw that there was a lot in this relationship that needed to change but just wouldn't okay now, near the middle, uh, about the bridge, bridge of the song, she starts to say, you did not break me, I'm still fighting for peace. Still fighting for peace. Still would suggest that she's been fighting for peace for a long time and has not stopped. Well, I digress. Anyway, uh, we'll go on to that later, but the question now is, who is she talking to? Now, 
Now, wait a minute. Isn't she just talking to the audience? Okay, fine. Yes, she's talking to the audience. No, duh. Once again, that's another obvious observation. I'm talking about what we don't see or hear. What she's talking about that we don't see or hear is a past relationship that failed with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Who knows? So in the verse, she says that I will never trust anyone or I will trust no one. So now because of that relationship that failed, she can't trust like she used to or like she wanted to. Now, in the bridge, we see something that's important. In the bridge, we see her say that I am still fighting for peace. The word still means a continuation. She has not stopped. She's been fighting for peace for a long time. Now, the question is, why would she be fighting for peace? Fighting for what? And fighting against whom? Hmm. Let's delve into that, shall we? Okay, so to make this simple for you guys, when we talk about the message of the song, the message really comes through the video itself. Now, this video has gotten a lot of flack, man. When I tell you people are hating on this video, people are saying it's, it's disgusting and it's pedophiliatic or however you say it. But basically, they think it's a depiction of a man who has a, a love, intimate relationship with this child. And that is absolutely not true, okay? See, for one, this video depicts Sia as a little girl. And the person, Shia LaBeouf, that we're looking at is her father. Wait, what a, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that Shia LaBeouf is her father. Yes, I'm saying Shia LaBeouf in this video is her father. Okay, let me explain. Okay, if you watch the video like I told you to, you would understand that Shia LaBeouf and this little girl Sia are inside of a cage. This cage is a representation of the actual situation. Now, what is that? Well, it's not in the lyrics and I definitely don't think someone would get it right off the bat. But if you have, congratulations. But for those who haven't, the cage is actually their relationship. Sia as a little girl is trapped. If you look at the video, you can realize that Shia LaBeouf is making all these faces and she's making all these faces and they just look wild. Yeah, some people on the surface would say it's interpretive dancing, but no, there's a message behind it. He is actually making those faces because as Sia's father, he had mental issues. Yes, he had mental issues. Now, wait a minute. You're saying her father in the video had mental issues? No, sir. I need proof. Okay, 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 I'll explain that too. Just just give me a second. Alright, I'll make this simple. The father is Shia LaBeouf. Sia is the little girl, or depicted as the little girl. The cage is their relationship. She is essentially trapped in that relationship, although she doesn't want to give up on her father, who has these ailing mental issues. So what she does in the video is she plays around with him. She, she, she is interacting with him in ways that most adults and children wouldn't interact otherwise. She's interacting with him on a level that he and she can understand together exclusively. That's why the relationship is so complicated. She is in there because she is the only person that can effectively communicate with her father that has mental issues. Okay? Now, now, wait a minute. No, that just doesn't make sense. Okay, so the cage is their relationship. He has mental issues and she is just normal. So, I mean, how do you explain all the skin tight clothes and, and, and all the weird faces and the dancing and, and the what? I don't understand. And no, it just doesn't make sense. The guy looks like a pedophile. I don't like it. All right. I'll explain that too. quite frankly. The reason why they're dressed like that. I have no real theory behind it. I mean, that's just the way they decided to dress the people up. That's the way they decided to interpret this whole thing. If they were in jeans and a t-shirt, it would take nothing away from the video and its message. But I can explain the reason why people think it, it, it's like pedophilia or, or they think the guy's a pedophile. I can explain that. Okay, the reason why people think that, for one, is because when you have a mental disability, and I'm glad they did this because they did this in the video, when you have a mental disability, especially as an adult, sometimes you seem like you're socially incapable to understand or uh, associate yourself with adults. Adults are on a higher level of thinking. When you have a mental uh, incapability, sometimes you only can really relate to children. That's why this whole video is so important. This guy, this male, obviously in his early 30s, 
or late 40s, however you want to see it, is in a situation where he cannot associate himself with normal adults because he has a mental incapability that doesn't allow him to do that. So the only person who can really communicate with him is Sia as the little girl. She's the only one that can really help him understand and even cope with what he's going through. And so the rolling around and the dancing and the wildness, that's them connecting on a, a more primal level to each other and with each other. It's like when you're with your dog. You don't just sit at the table with your dog and, and talk about sports and the news. No, you roll around the floor with your dog. You let your dog lick you on your face. Now, I'm not saying he's a dog, but what I'm basically saying is that these two have a very exclusive relationship that no one else can understand. And neither can the general public that's watching this video. They cannot understand why they're rolling on the floor, but that's it. They have a relationship that only those two understand, but that's why it makes the situation so much worse for this little girl. Now, at the end of the video, I personally think it really brought it home for a lot of people who understood art and understood the song. It brought it home because we realized that this man that's been uh, with this little girl, her father, he can't escape. He can't leave where he is. And she can't pull him out. She can't save him. Mr. Skeptic, do you know why she has an elastic heart in the first place? Oh, no, not really. Well, she has one because she had to cope with the very relationship that she had with her father. Ever since that relationship, she could no longer really progress in any form of relationship that she had with any other man, romantic or otherwise. Sia is hurt. Her heart has to be elastic in order to be able to be pulled back and forth emotionally. She's tired and she was tired because ever since she was a little girl, she had men that pulled her, yanked her and abused her heart. Sia has to have an elastic heart in order just to survive. That is the truth of the song. That is the truth of the video. She left that cage. She didn't want to go back. But she had to. And she goes back to that cage every time she gets in a relationship that she knows is going to fail. She gets back in that cage every time she deals with somebody like her father. Unfortunately, they say that we get with people just like our parents. In the song, she can't trust anymore. In the song, she says that she has an elastic heart, but if you pull her too hard, she'll snap. If she gets pulled like that again, she will snap. And the scary part is, she might end up looking just like him. Let that sink in, Mr. Skeptic. Let that sink in. Wow, I, I guess I never saw it like that. Yeah, it's pretty deep. Well, anyway, thank you so much for the support, everybody. Anybody who's watching this video right now, thank you so much. I'll have a video posted every Saturday, or at least I'll try every Saturday to have a video posted of a new song theory. And I hope you guys just enjoy it. I hope you guys thoroughly enjoy it. And if you have any other songs you want me to check out, you want me to pick apart and dissect, just put in the comments below this video, and we'll work something out. And remember, guys, it's just a theory. A song theory. Wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Wrong YouTube channel. Anyway, I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode of Song Theory. Thank you so much. Alright guys, this is the end card. Thanks so much for your support. Not bad. I love your work. I love Game Theory. I love everything you do. Thank you so much. Uh, anyway, uh, please check out Game Theory. Check out Matt Pat's channel. He's a great guy. He does great work and I love watching his videos. Um, and I hope he sees this video. Uh, he's a great inspiration to me. Anyway, my next uh, episode is going to be on Saturday. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. All right, see you later.